I just got back from a trip to California with Lee, Chris, Sydney, and Anthony, and we at one point found ourselves in the sand dunes near Morro Bay. When I got back, I started to go through all the footage and the photos that we got, and I thought, wow, this is a cool opportunity for me to try and make a dune-inspired color grade. The light out there was super flat and boring that day, so I thought I would do a little bit of light shaping to see if I could add a little bit of dimension back into the shots. Listen, I gave. So I thought it would be fun to break that down a little bit for you because it can make a huge difference in your color grades and it's really not that hard. So secure the cup and let's hop into DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so we've got these two different clips. We got one where I'm pretty far away, one where I'm a little bit closer, but I also wanna point out that I've got a still up here that I can turn on just so that I can check and make sure that I'm kinda in the same ballpark and so that I can look at Timothy Chalamet because he's a handsome fella. So we've got eight nodes going on here and I'm just going to try and recreate what I've done here for you so that you can see kind of the process that I go through. So let's disable all these and then we're going to make a new version so we can create a new version. Reset. So we're back to scratch here and here's how we're going to do it. So first things first, on my very first node, I'm going to want to add Cinematch, which is a plugin that I really love and I just use this for my input color space transform. So first things first, we're going to select the camera that it was shot on, so Sony FX3, and then the picture profile that it was shot in, which is S-Log3 S Gamut 3 Cine. We're gonna hit apply, and then our output space, we're going to change it to DaVinci Wide Gamut. So this is just changing from Sony S-Log, S-Log3 specifically, to DaVinci Wide Gamut. Then on node six here, I'm actually going to grab a color space transform, drag it on there, and we're gonna go from DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, to Rec. 709, Rec. 709A. And this is our output color space transform. So we went from Sony to DaVinci, and then from DaVinci to Rec. 709. And now we've got somewhat normal looking, like this is actually how flat and gross it looked that day. Uh, and we're gonna try and make it look better. So first things first, I want a lot less exposure. So I'm gonna pull that way down. I am also going to mess with the white balance. So if we pull up our split, I'm gonna just try and get my sand color in the kind of same ballpark here. So something like that is looking pretty good for now. We might come back and check this out a little bit later. So just on the color space transform and some of the primary adjustments, we've got this to that. Now, the next thing I actually want to do is add some of my kind of looks that I want. So I want a couple of film looks on here. So we're going to go grab Dehancer, which is another great plugin. And we're going to go turn everything off. So I scrolled all the way to the bottom and hit disable all tools. And I'm going to go back. The only thing that I want out of here is the print. So I want a 2383 Kodak print. I'm going to enable that. And then on the last node here, I'm going to grab Film Convert Nitrate, which is another plugin by the same people who made Cinematch. And I just want another little, a little taste from some of the film emulations that they've got in here. The KD5207, but we're just gonna dial it way back. So you've got your film chroma, which means like the colors. So we're gonna pull that back to like here. And then your film luma, which means like the light. We're gonna pull that back quite a bit. So it's a lot more subtle when we go before and after. And then for grain, I just want to pull it back a little bit. Maybe there. I like that amount of grain. Now that I have these two film emulations on there, it's kind of changed my color a little bit. So I'm going to go back to my initial white balance in Cinematch here. I'm just going to dial this in a little bit. So like the sand color is looking pretty, pretty consistent there. It's looking pretty good to me. So we have before, we have our color space transform plus a little bit of messing around with exposure and white balance. And then we have our film emulations on there, including some grain as well. The next thing that I did were what I call basic adjustments, which is basically just a curve. So I'm gonna go into my second node here. I'm gonna grab my curves and I'm gonna separate the Y from the RGB here. And I'm going to pull up my black point a bunch and then kind of create a little bit of an S curve in here. 
This is just giving a little bit more contrast in all these like shadows and highlights because again, it was just so flat out that day. And I'm just trying to get a little bit more oomph in our video here. So we're getting pretty close there. I like the amount of kind of contrast that I have. I like these moody skies. And the last step in getting what I want here is the fact that I want to shape the light. So right now we don't have a whole lot of like interest going on. And so we're gonna try and add that with a couple of shape nodes here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is on my fourth node here, I'm going to grab a uh, circular or radial gradient. I'm going to put it down at the bottom, angle it a little bit. And all I'm going to do is go into my HDR panel here and turn down the exposure. It doesn't need a whole lot. Let's just do like 0.5 exposure, something like that. And then on the fifth one, I'm going to do the exact same but opposite thing. So I'm going to grab another radial gradient here or a circular mask or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put it up in the corner here, almost like it's a sun. And I've feathered it all the way out. So here's what I'm actually affecting. And I just got to that by hitting shift H. And then I'm going to boost the exposure a whole bunch. And then again on my curves here, I'm just going to bring up my blacks because that'll give it that kind of like faded kind of misty look. I'm going to do it with just the Y selected. I'm going to make a point, I don't know, somewhere right around there. And I'm holding option so it stays right where it's supposed to be. And then I'm just going to fade up the bottom. So I'm holding option so that I can pull this along the, the center line here. I'm just going to fade this up a little bit. Look at how nice and misty that kind of top corner looks now. And I think I also want to add a little bit of contrast into my foreground here. We got all these kind of nice shadowy areas. So I'm just going to grab my contrast inside my HDR panel here. And I'm going to add something like that. So this is that light shaping portion or just these two nodes in here. And check this out. If I go before, and after, it looks like a completely different shot. It looks like there was so much more light up here. It looks like there was so much more kind of grit and interest down here. And it just kind of draws your eye into that center point as well. And then when I went to grade the second shot, I literally just copied the grade from the first shot and then adjusted from there. So let's middle click or you can right click and hit apply grade and it'll bring that grade over from the first one. And then we've got some adjustments to make. First of all, let's get rid of these four just for a minute. And we're just gonna work on our basic exposure and our temperature and stuff here. So this one's even a little bit brighter than the other one was. So I'm gonna bring it down a bit. That's looking better. And then I think we can adjust our white balance just a little bit here. Something like that's looking pretty good. Now if we bring back in our basic adjustments, it's looking pretty good. Then we've got our bottom portion where we're adding contrast and stuff. Oh man, look at my skin. So it's looking a little too intense on the bottom here. I'm just gonna move my mask into a position that makes more sense for the frame here because I don't want it to be too much on me in there. Also gonna take my contrast back down to normal there. So all it's doing right now is just this minus 0.5 exposure, so half a stop. And it just kind of draws a little bit more attention to these like footsteps and stuff in the sand that are around me. Just kind of gives a little bit more shape to that foreground area. And then if we go to this second one, again, I'm just going to kind of adjust so that it makes sense for the frame. Again, I like that kind of sun coming out of the top right corner. And that one actually feels pretty good. You know what I'm going to do though? I also want to add just a little warmth to that sun area. So I'm going to move my HDR panel temperature a little bit warmer so that it feels a little bit more like a sun. I'm actually going to go back to the previous one and also do that because that's kind of cool. Now with this one, I do want to do one more thing 
that I didn't do in the previous one. So I'm gonna add one more node in here. And then if we zoom way in, because of all the other adjustments that I've made, it's affected my skin quite a bit. And I am not that tan. So I wanna kinda of have that looking a little bit more normal again. And if we look at the reference photo that we have here, Timothy Chalamet's skin is quite desaturated. Like it's, it's quite light, so it stands off the background a little bit and it's quite desaturated, like even his lips it doesn't have like the normal pink that I'm sure he has in his actual lips. What we're going to do is grab a circle, draw a space around me. Then I'm going to grab my qualifier and I'm going to select my arm. And then we're just going to try and make this so that it's only my skin. There we go. If we just track forward a little bit. So then we're just gonna denoise that a little bit. So it smooths it out. We'll clean the black and white a little bit here so we don't get any weird kind of glowing or anything like that. And then what we should be able to do is increase the brightness on it. You have to be careful here because if you go too crazy with it, you get this kind of glowing effect. So I'm actually gonna shrink the radius a little bit. I'm going to keep boosting the brightness on it and desaturate it a little bit. Look at how desaturated he is, that's crazy. That being said, I am definitely a little bit tan. So on this one, we've got before, color space transform and basic adjustments. Then we've got our film looks. We've got some curves going on. We've got that foreground, the background, and then the skin adjustment. And now we have nice looking shot. So that's how I got my Dune inspired color grade. And just to show you that it's not too complicated, really, it's just broken down into a couple of different steps. And then you're just fiddling away until you get what you want. So I hope you got something out of that. Make sure to leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And on your way down there, make sure to hit the like, subscribe, and bell notification button so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.